Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Um, many ministries have paid for it, just shifting the date of a meeting, a convention, a conference. And I sincerely want to appreciate every one of us every time we get word, we get information that um, adjustments here and there are made to the meetings, either the days or the timings. We have been very faithful to cooperate. Um, and I sincerely want you to know that the Lord will bless you. For me, it's a sign of your love for God, your passion and your commitment towards your destiny, and also your sincere belief in the anointing and the grace that is upon my life and upon this ministry and for that I am deeply grateful I would not take it for granted especially for the thousands connecting online Koinonia has become for many people um, the word of the Lord for them in season I am amazed at how many people from different nations and different places literally leave off the the spiritual investment that they receive through this place thousands of ministries have been greatly built individuals have come into greater levels of the anointing and um, I've also had the privilege of traveling quite extensively especially in recent times and uh, I am always very humbled to see the finger of God at work in territories we have had i think it's been a very glorious year every year i keep saying this is the best but um sincerely speaking i have seen the hand of god in ways probably this year more than ever before i have seen the manifestation of his spirit and his anointing god has done so many things there is nothing more profitable for any man of god than seeing the fruit of your dealings and your trainings with god other people are living off the fruit of your work with god it's so consoling and it's so blessing let me encourage someone up front god is going somewhere with you be patient with him be patient with him this is already a prophetic word for someone don't, don't rush God. The thing that is coming upon your life is big. Don't, don't rush God carelessly. Are we together now? A cow, I think a cow is pregnant for 13 months. Am I right? 13 months before it gives birth. There are other animals and other lower creatures that the entire gestation period, maybe from a week to a few months, depending on the size and the quality of what is being delivered the long pregnancy communicates the quality of the prophecy you are about to deliver be patient with god are we together be patient with god god is working out something that is transgenerational god is working out something that for many of us will outlive the territories where he began with us from. This is how mighty men were raised. 
sometimes it can be frustratingly long but just wait with god he said ye who have continued with me not he who started with me continued with me are we together now one of the things that destroy people is when they begin to compete with themselves oh we graduated together with so 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 person now the person has three cars and i'm here just trying to press into god don't be foolish be discerning you must understand that the program of god for people is very different that person is a happy civil servant with his wife but there is an anointing upon you that is for nations the dealings cannot be the same are we together there are times god will tell others go and he will tell you wait please i'm, I'm speaking prophetically to someone tonight it is important for you to see the magnitude of where he's taking you to i look at my life today and i look at what god is doing and i thank him for granting me the grace to stay with him i look at how many lives are being blessed and have been blessed do you know people will reward you for waiting yeah your waiting in itself is not a loss you must stay and understand there is no man who attempting to build a house will not sit down and count the cost whether he has what it takes to complete it this rush rush life please hear me this life of wanting to do everything at once it will land us in trouble are we together there's a kind of fish that you have to cook it for a very long time what's the name the stock stock is this no not stock it's stock fish huh no 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 there, there's i can't remember the name you have to cook it for a long time if you really want to enjoy it you can off the fire if you are tired and eat whatever is there but if you are ready for a healthy meal it will stretch your patience the hunger is burning you from head to toe but you wait but you wait in hope you see that's the difference you can wait in vain both of them look the same that's what is painful it is the end that will show whether you were waiting in vain or waiting in hope because those who are waiting in vain and those who are waiting in hope everything looks exactly so it is the end that justifies it so don't just wait foolishly you wait in hope hallelujah let me before we briefly touch on what the lord put in my heart to bless us with i just want to remind us again and again i will keep doing this as god grants grace as to why we are gathered here week in week out we've been doing this for many years and for those who have been part of the ministry long before koinonia in fact for many people it, it was every day every week laboring when when you look at people and they tell you they've been doing this for 10 years 15 years you're asking you mean this is how i mean nobody questions a student they look at you after 15 years and they say ah where are you now and you say oh finally i just got admission or oh, i'm writing work nobody says till now they say wow congratulations although the time is long but you are paying that price in hope one day they will ask you and you say oh sorry to tell you i got a job five years ago i'm now the director of the company and, ah, that little boy writing jsc listen god is going somewhere with you you can choose to end your dealing with him that's not going to hell you will not go to hell but you have pegged the extent to which god can do business with you i've told god there is no restraint as far as my work with you is concerned i break every limit take me as far as you can take me stretch me as far as i can be stretched until i can carry an anointing that will bless a generation thank god for that which you have done but this is child's play in the visions of the lord i keep seeing it again that there is more there is more i like you to pray and say lord stretch me 
don't leave me like this don't leave me like this i've seen signs and wonders but this is not enough i can't take what i have now to the nations it will make me fight and quarrel it will create competition it's not unique enough it's not distinguished enough oh, oh, oh. Verse 38 of Acts chapter 10. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Listen. Then it says he, on the strength of that quality of the anointing, he went about doing good. You cannot do good just out of compassion. The problems that befall mankind takes more than sympathy. There are challenges in the lives of people that need it. You have to move further than comfort. You are truly a blessing when you pay the price for the anointing. Young and old, listen to me, I'm speaking to you. Every man of God I know today who is doing mighty things for God, who is being thanked and honored by nations, they are only thanking the anointing. The price to have brought something forth it's painful it's not a gift it's a school in the spirit and the semester system does not work like school here one course can take two days to finish another course can take four years to finish you don't have a system with god and say okay after a particular predefined space of time no You can be moving forward in the spirit and then just stay in a particular class and for two years you have not moved. It's not backsliding. It is the course content is bulky and you must be articulately trained. Now, you can choose to think you are too, you are too long and then graduate yourself. The door is always open. This lecturer does not close the door. It is your passion that closes the door in this school of the spirit is students that close the door the holy spirit does not close it it's wide open you can choose to walk out and say lord i'm tired please i'm, I'm grateful with all the mediocrity moving around and then you get angry and criticize others nothing will replace the absence of the presence and the anointing of the spirit i learn this every day as I have the privilege of studying history, studying the moves of God and watching the things that God does through my life. Let me tell you, the anointing is, is a commodity of inestimable worth. Never trivialize it. It is the secret of transgenerational relevance. You are truly a blessing when you pay the price to sustain the ability to change lives, to shift systems then you are a blessing sympathizing with people may help psychologically but it will not prefer solutions any man that trivializes the anointing 
is about to waste his time on earth i tell you the truth it has nothing to do with ministry i went for a meeting you know something happened i didn't even tell my people they watched that happen we came in this evening from a meeting i've been ministering in a conference and as i was stepping out by the roadside just to go to the vehicle probably they are here i may not know two families who came on friday for koinonia trusting god for a miracle of the fruit of the womb the husbands together with their wives and they were friends they decided to come and koinonia didn't hold on friday so they now paid the price went back to kaduna to catch up with the final session of the meeting this morning and when the meeting was done i think the protocol helped them i was walking and they came and um, they just looked at me and compassion filled my heart now whether or not i can solve their problem is another thing and it's wickedness to claim i can solve it when i cannot you see let me tell you something if you love god and you love people you will pay the price for the anointing that is the only way to bless people i'm speaking to someone here here's a family experiencing this kind of challenge they don't need counseling they've heard it they are not daft people i don't have to tell them just go and see doctor so 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 and so i i think they are adults enough they are married and they stood there and i watched the two women and watched their dear husband standing and i was standing in the middle of an opportunity that can begin a new journey for a family or brag like we always do as men of god lay hands on them and walk away and let them go back to disappointment and i looked at them years ago i would have been in i would have been in so much um um guilt because i knew i really wouldn't do anything about it but as the days have unfolded, I have seen the spiritual synergy that this thing is a formula. You can produce repeated results in the lives of people. I caught the revelation of fruitfulness this year. This year, 2016. I caught it like a key and I said, this is it. I've gotten it. There is a key. When you search, you will find. When you wait for it to come and meet you, you will never find it. There's a lot of spiritual laziness. We hope that God will carry the word and look for you. No hospital moves around looking for patients. The hospital is built. Even if you cannot walk, they will carry you there. There is a, a unit called emergency. But you have to get there. I see people many times and I see that we are not really passionate enough. I'm like a spiritual historian. I'm searching. What is the secret behind predictable results in this area? There must be a hunger. And I looked at them. And I told the women, hold my hands. And they held my hands. And I knew their wombs were open. Yeah. Not necessarily because they were under the anointing rolling. I knew. There is a level of flawlessness that you can step into as far as the dispensing of the anointing. At that point, you will know that you are a blessing. You can see a man 20 years of misery and his prayer is to have an encounter with Christ through you. And the moment they see you, they start rejoicing because they know their problems have ended. Let me teach you something. I'm still going to use money. I hope you don't mind. Um, let me use money. Watch this. I think I've taught it here. The anointing is like money. There are things the level of anointing you have can afford to produce. There are results that you are anointed is not enough. Everything that needs to be purchased in the realm of the spirit that is below the level of your anointing can be purchased. But every challenge higher than your level of anointing cannot be purchased. Watch this. I did the teaching this morning similar to this and I want to use that analogy. If I have, for instance, I'm not saying anointing is money, but if I have a thousand naira worth of the anointing, Ejimi, and if you need maybe 200 naira worth of a miracle, 
this miracle you need is within the jurisdiction of my anointing to produce it are you getting the point now so when you come to me i will be able to minister to you and give you an assurance that you are going back with a result are we together but if thank you if what you need is um let's say a miracle the equivalence of a phone of fifty thousand, am i anointed yes but the challenge he has is beyond the anointing that i possess to solve that problem don't just say anointing is anointing you are joking how god anointed jesus look at the extent that's why he could do good every problem jesus confronted was lower than his level of the anointing so there was flawless results i'm telling you this is it's a revelation god gave me the reason why some things happen and some don't happen is that those that happen are within the level of the anointing to be able to release it and those that are above it so i can lay hands on you falling down is under this but the miracle you need is above it so you will fall down and yet not have the miracle are you getting what i'm saying now you can come to me say man of god prophesy over my life i lay hands on you and you fall because the dynamics of being slain in the spirit is 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 the is a basic dimension of the anointing it does not mean you received anything so when you possess such a dimension of grace such that the major problems of mankind is within the jurisdiction of your grace to solve at that point you are a living blessing the woman with the issue of blood if she touched peter she would have kept bleeding correct yeah but she touched a man who was dripping anointing from head to toe when you saw jesus you knew that was it if you did not receive from jesus it was not a lapse of power it was your dishonor and lack of discernment do we have such people in zaria do we have such people in nigeria men that you can carry your trouble with joy with joy not with suspicion that the moment you land in koinonia before service starts you are dancing because you said the devil that did not stop me from coming here that's the end of it when people testify I am touched not just by the testimony but I'm humbled that by grace we have been able to stay with God and grow to a level where now the anointing we possess is above their challenges this is a very deep secret that many of you will catch as you grow in ministry it's working in me it's working in me it's God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me listen you know you possess an anointing when certain testimonies start repeating themselves when you begin to hear repeated testimonies then you know the same way a woman cooks and before you get to her restaurant psychologically you have tasted the food because you know she's not going to tell you sorry today this year i'm burnt she's left that level that's why they put a price tag on their food you buy rubbish for 200 naira anything you see smoky or not you manage it because you know what you paid for but when you pay 10,000 naira for a meal, listen, what will make men leave their nation and come to you? Are you that important? Because you think your name is Joshua Selman? Are you that important? That a man can, let me tell you something. Most people say people are busy. Nobody is busy. Everybody is looking for solution. If you become what they are running around looking for, I promise you, you can hold koinonia every day by 10 30 to 3 a.m in the morning notice the time 10 30 to 3 a.m men will still come and you'll be wondering are you not a government worker again and they will say the last person you prophesy to his salary for 30 years came to him in one year why should i want to labor like that you are not a blessing when you are not anointed i'm telling you this learn it understand this speak grammar speak hebrew words speak greek 
do anything you want to do if you cannot reveal Christ he said great is the mystery of godliness Christ is come in the flesh the word becoming flesh that men and women can carry their results a man comes here not loving God and hearing you speak something infects him he goes back and does not even know what is happening to him again look how long it takes people in the body of Christ to adjust to spiritual things they get born again in January no passion in the atmosphere they got born again it's in November they now consider being filled with the Holy Spirit oh no there's no fire there there is a way you can step into an anointing huh? the lifespan of your journey is one week in one week it will look like you've been born again for 10 years because of the impact of the grace you came under I made a vow to myself I said I will never go to a ministry twice to reveal Christ there yeah. twice no no that you invite me and say come again it's like pushing a wall let's keep pushing uh -uh. I prepare my spirit that if God grants me an opportunity to come to your city or your area then you know something dramatic will happen can men come to you are you that valuable I watch people trivialize the Holy Spirit I watch people trivialize the anointing and then somehow they think the key is just to receive lay none of hands oh man of God I came with a seed of one million just lay hands on me and then you go to another one lay hands on me and it's as if you are shopping for anointing and then you bring it and say now I have what it takes you are joking you are really joking you believe spiritual things are that cheap I came to challenge you there is where God is taking you to don't 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 rob yourself of the privilege of standing before nations to be a representation of the power and the grace and the glory of God look at the testimony of that dear lady 4.69 you get 4.69 if it's cheap try it go and prophesy to somebody after this night that you will come back with the same result and then you see that it's not so easy the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference when Benin came to Nigeria two weeks ago look at the rush look at the preparation literally he kept the body of Christ at a standstill is it true that everything he shared you have never had it will you be honest to say you have never had it is it true that what he taught you has never been heard he has repeated it in many churches he has taught series on it so why seek him why crowd yourself outside in overflows why sit down and stream why cancel your programs you didn't bring a man you brought a grace you brought an anointing you brought a priceless ability that can turn the lives of people around now foolish people say what is there about them no no when you honor a man you don't honor a body you honor sacrifice you honor a depth of sacrifice that has afforded God space to move through that vessel in a mighty way listen listen look up let me tell you something come David Dam let's assume David Dam has let's assume that he has um high blood pressure or HIV watch this don't you think God wants to heal him on Wednesday don't you think God wants to heal him next year the desire of God to heal him is the day someone who has paid the price to give God space to release that dimension of his possibility when that vessel appears his healing has come why do people sit on a wheelchair till an anointed man comes is it that that's the day God wanted to heal them? That's the day the anointing that could solve that problem stepped in. There are men that step into places and they just shift atmospheres. Just like that. But they never started that way. I shared a verse of scripture that I would want to share with us the Lord. Thank you, David. The Lord gave me 
an instruction to repeat a few portions of what I shared in the meeting today with us and it will bless you Luke 1 80 please Luke chapter 1 verse 80 Luke chapter 1 verse 80 this was our first prayer point yesterday at the conference and I want to establish it again and then we will pray Luke chapter 1 media please help us I want us to pray tonight Luke chapter 1 verse Are you there? The first four words, please, if you are a Christian. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. Put your name where there is child. Yeah, ready? One, two, go. So men can grow. So men can grow. The problem is not where I am. I know I may not be so anointed now. I know I am barren of understanding but the Bible reveals to us that there is a possibility in the spirit where men can lead their current spiritual level to a pedestal that is higher and the child John the Baptist grew he was ordained a prophet from prophecy but he was born a child and the child grew when I found this scripture I jumped I said so men can grow once upon a time I was not here I grew meaning there are levels I should get to that I'm not yet there I can grow growth is a secret growth is a provision in the body that translates men into limitless possibilities I can grow and the child John grew to become a prophet and the child naive barring of any sensory perception into the realm of the spirit no prophetic acumen and the child grew men can grow i'm not hearing god now you can grow i'm not anointed now i can grow my company is nothing to write home about it can grow my marriage is nothing to write home about it can grow my home is full of children who are disturbing they will grow growth is a mystery that when you understand you know there is hope and the child grew and eni that little ministry that was meeting on the floor grew to what it is now and koinonia is growing 10 years from now when we stand before the nations and we look at the photos of today as excited as we are about today we will nod and say that's David Dam and they say who that guy is shaking the nations and David Dam grew ah look at mama and look at Femi promise these guys are just shaking nations in different territories and you will watch the pictures and see them sitting down and they and they will see some of you who are seated now as if you don't know anything about the anointing when they hear and say my god that is the woman of god whose crusades are packed full everywhere she's the one can you see her face in that picture and the woman grew. men can grow into the anointing men can grow into limitless possibilities in the spirit the challenge is not where you are the challenge is do you want there was a day this guy when he joined the worship team he could not play keyboard like this he challenged himself his music director and his leaders challenged him and he decided to grow now when i learned how to play keyboard i don't think this guy had laid his hand on a keyboard i began to play keyboard 1994 94 95 but i refused to grow so although it's that long where i stopped in the growth is still where i am today you can be born again for donkey years but the peg you gave god is still where he will faithfully stand and wait for you you can be ministry and the highest miracle you will ever see is headache 
because that's where you stopped the moment you got to that level of your anointing you graduated yourself awarded yourself and held a convocation for yourself but there are those who even at phd they say we are still undergraduates lord we are staying with you when i hear men like benny Hinn saying i still want more of his anointing i say my god more of what after shaking nations yet some of us are already here bragging in our arrogance oh i prophesied to sister so 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 it came to pass you think that's what you are going to use to shift nations you are joking and the child i want to show you that men don't just happen and work strong in spirit but the system is this he was in the desert he was in the place of training for David, it was the cave of Adulam. Listen, please hear me. I taught in the conference where we went to on the coming revival. And I mean, I think some of you need to get our external ministration. Sometimes I wish that I carry all of you along. And uh, because those meetings are usually very glorious meetings, very epochal teachings. And I taught yesterday on what we call the travail, the mystery of seasons, the mystery of the dealing of God in a man's life that brings the anointing the anointing does not come just because you want it the anointing is like a certificate that is given to you at the end of a season of being dealt with god and i want to share just a few parts of it and then we'll pray i want us to pray i'll just spend a few minutes and then we'll pray tonight fill me up till i overflow i want to run over I want to run over Fill me up Till I overflow I want to Fill me up Fill me up Till I overflow sit down when a believer listen to me let me teach you let me show you how people grow and become matured in the spirit men do not become matured in the spirit just by going to church there is a step there but there is a system listen to me please God's system of working with men there are seasons of your life watch this when you will pass through what we call the travail jesus said something very interesting john chapter 16 please give it to us quickly media john chapter 16 verse 21 jesus was teaching on the ministry of the holy spirit and he said something that is very interesting if you're a christian and it's projected and you can see it please i want you to read it one to read why stop this is strange i said it yesterday and i want to repeat it here some travails are because your time has come it's not because you are out of alignment with god's system jesus is teaching a woman comes to a point in her life where she's in travail the travail is not because she hated god the travail is because her time has come many immature believers will say ah the travel is a sign that she's missing out on god somewhere the bible says because her hour is come do you know there are things that happen to people's lives simply because seasons have come not because you are out of sync with god seasons have come follow me but as soon as she's delivered of the child the reason for her travel not a child the child the very object for which the sorrow came the bible says she remembered no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world 
but until then there is a contention please listen to me many pastors have tried to preach what i'm telling you away to tell believers nothing like that happens i i i love the body of christ but brothers and sisters i tell you this by the authority of the grace of christ given to me i know how men become anointed don't sit down and allow people just fool you into thinking one day an extreme dimension of the anointing will come you are really joking there is a system and the caption of that system is called the travail I will tell you why these seasons come they must come you never pray them away you only pray for grace to pass through them the praying and saying they should not come is saying i do not want to enter that realm i don't care who you are i don't care how you love god jesus went through a season where he said father if it be thy will if it's possible let's renegotiate how this thing will happen but he quickly remembered and said nevertheless not my will but your will be done Abraham waited 25 solid years embarrassingly painful his servants had children and he did not have any do you know what it means to respect a man who does not have results while you the subordinate has it that's what Abraham went through he didn't just go through barrenness he went through the shame and the pain yet he waited It's in the system of God and is how he builds men and brings them into authentic power. The generals of faith walked that way. Our generation is running away from it. And we keep bragging and prophesying in arrogance. We are going to do more than Smith Wigglesworth. You go and read their history and you will see a track record. There is not one of them I know that escaped this. Not one. Not one of them. There is a season of travail because your hour how many people want to start ministry without going through this and they crash land and make a fool out of themselves there is what qualifies you to host God there is what qualifies you to be a dispenser of the possibilities of God to nations one of it is this the mystery of the travail seasons that stretch your spiritual life from border to border seasons that stretch every part of your conviction mm. someone is getting blessed fill me up till I overflow I want to run I want to run one more time fill me up fill me up Habarato Casala Balarada. Let me tell you the benefit of the dealings of God. The first advantage of the dealings of God is that the dealings of God with a man produces alignment, it produces yieldedness. And it produces a track record in the spirit never forget this the dealings of God the spirit of man cannot align to God by default that destiny must come under a system that will compel alignment a system in ancient times they had a way they made the anointing oil right the olive oil they would take the olive plants and put them on something that looks like a threshing floor and put a heavy object upon it and someone will hold it and begin to turn it clockwise and the pressure mounted on that olive begins to squeeze out the oil the oil will drip out together with particles impurities but the man for the joy of the oil will not even mind the cry let me tell you God loves you too much to let your tears deceive him don't think he plans to end that season you must drink that cup in full I know what I'm saying does not look pleasant I show you the path to glory there is a relationship between death and glory there is a relationship between death and glory you will never be able to access glory without death 
verily verily i say unto you except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it alone. no you don't just speak to nations and doors open i'm in christ you are joking you are really joking that ignorance is a sign that there's something you have not even seen because scripture is prophetic you need the holy ghost holy men were moved by the spirit so only the holy spirit can interpret what he wrote there are three reasons why we go through seasons of travail let me give it to us quickly number one The seasons of travail in a man's life, listen, they, they, are, they create experiences that give you a personal revelation of who God is. The first advantage of seasons of travail is a personal revelation of who God is. Personal revelation. There's too much theoretical knowledge about God in the body of Christ so many people they know the god that this person said people come to sing special numbers are you clapping for my jesus is that what you give my god a foreign and a strange incense rising you must go through seasons the first advantage of the seasons of travail is they break out every sense of falsehood and theory and help you know who God is for yourself no longer the God of Joshua Selman you encounter him every name that God was named was an experience a season introduced that dimension of him what is the name you have given God based on your experience if you were asked to never call God by any name in the Bible has your experience given him a name that you can relate with you call him the name of another man's experience show me a name like a jimmy can have a secret name for hope hope can have a secret name for a jimmy aaron can have a secret name for his wife i want you to show me a name that your experience with god has brought that only you can call someone else does not understand but two of you know i'll show you why many people do not have convictions in the body of christ they know the God of another person. They do not know him for themselves. God's ultimate desire is not only that men will introduce him to you, but that they serve as ushers. A time must come, you must have a track record and say, I know him. I know whom I have believed. I know. Job 42 from verse 5 to 8. Job was rich. He talked about God. He was a God-fearing man. He gave sacrifices. But the time came in the life of Job. He could not explain the predicaments in his life. Everything went haywire. His entire life crashed. And in the end, this is what Job said. Read it please. One to read. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But now, my eyes have seen you. I heard Joshua Selman when he was talking about you. I heard him say you can heal the sick. I said amen. But now that they told me I am SS, I need to know the healer now. Now that they told me that I, I am barren, I tried everything. I went to every man of God. They did their best. Lord, I locked the door, me and you show me something about your glory. Church history is full of men who had encounters when they closed the door at everything and say Lord show me something I'm tired of hearing the God of someone else and an explanation I cannot relate with show me the song that has come out of your experience with God worshipers you have been singing Kotka's song you've been singing Thai Tribet's song show me a song that came out of your tears you thought you will not make the next day and he gave you a song every time you are in a challenge that song comes it may not minister to others but it's your song it's not a song for congregation it's a song for your secret place a song that reminds you of who god is let me tell you you know why people certain people in the body of christ become unshakable and immovable it's not because they are blind it's not because they are not human 
they have an experience with God that is higher than every other thing I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear but now I have had an encounter with you Job summoned God in chapter 38 and said God you need to come and reveal yourself to me and when God showed up God said Job I've been hearing you talk since chapter 1 I've just been keeping quiet you've been making a lot of noise like you know me now let me talk to you where were you when I founded the earth when I laid the foundations when the morning stars sang and Job said my God I was never taught that there is such a thing he said declare if you have understanding there are healing evangelists who stepped into the level of creative miracles when they sat down and prayed Kenneth E. Hagin he was the guinea pig to his healing ministry dying of a deformity and nobody could heal him I told you about my story I've had fungal infection that ate my head they said hair will not grow on my head again I know what oppression looks like when I'm laying hands on people that memory sponsors the release of the anointing there is something that sponsors compassion. It's not just because I'm kind-hearted. No. no. When you stand and you see someone's legs eaten by worms and is smelling, you are attempting to go, but you remember an experience. Ha! Fill me up. Till I overflow. I want to run. I want to run Fill me up Let me relate it to students Have you seen Have you seen a final year student Advising a new student Who is just entering he will tell you sorry sir they gave me a course i'm trying to do change of department and the boy cannot sleep and the final year student is laughing because to that guy is a mount he, he's having a mountain can they change my course uh, can they do this sorry sir how do they do it in maybe you and you laugh i say my brother there's more to come you better relax you have not seen the guy in the department you are going to and then she enters the office of the man and for the first time in her life a man would blast and insult her he said you are stupid if you think you're a prostitute i'm not for you go out <sighs> and she leaves never has she been insulted like that then you find out others who live in that realm every day they insulted them till they submitted their project it's called growth and the child grew no matter how you sympathize with that boy leave him sometimes don't pity people too much to cover seasons that will afford them opportunity to grow there, there is sometimes you can go through so much pain you want to over pamper people and in doing it you don't give them the opportunity to know god leave them alone every day you are giving him two two hundred naira one day tell him look i've done my best for you go and find out and he would think we'll call him later you say abba i know sam sam will call me he can't allow me to die like this i saw him cooking yam and then you, the holy spirit will tell you don't call him by nine o'clock he will start browsing the secret of prosperity enter now something is happening to him don't stop it pressure leads people to the anointing When a man starts a ministry, he will criticize every man of God. What is there with crowd? Wait and see. It's just because we need a venue. When he has a venue and for two years, he will first deny. Then later he will look at it and say, well, there may be something. After three years, he will be the first to sit down in the pastor's conference. When they say, I prophesy open door, he will be on his knees before the prophecy comes. Pressure brought him to an encounter. There are people who are too stubborn. Pharaoh was like that. Pharaoh did not have an experience with God. He only knew the God of the Hebrews. One day God said, I will reveal to you who I am. Moses, let me use you as a tool. Go and show this man. And he said, ah, is he just parting the Red Sea? They left him face to face. When he killed his child, he said, I did it. Me, God, let your witches bring him back to life. 
and all the gods of Egypt could not do it and he said the God of Moses he is God listen brothers and sisters let me tell you something you need an experience with God that will give you the audacity to move through life we chicken out too much and we look at life strange as if it's because you have not gone through I want you wherever you drill your experiences go and gather them this night create a basket in the spirit call it my testimony and call it my ladder to the place of the anointing store it back I know A and B happened to you that was not favorable but the Bible says for we know those who have not gone through it do not know but us we know that all things all things all things all things there are things i've gone through in my life that make me look at mountains like mold hills i tell you i don't even pray about them what for it's a waste of time i already have worked with god enough to know that there is a way out i don't have to disturb him some prayers are a symbol of faith and faithlessness and ignorance it's because you do not understand the systems of god a track record that track record produces strength and stamina proverbs 24 verse 10 if you fall in the day of battle it says your strength is small i see a lot of believers who do not have stamina you you see how malleable they are everything bends them under pressure to explain everything to everybody no it's not like that it's not like i'm a bad person who cares there is a system you go with god that you are governed by posterity conscience and the fear of god any other person can go places i look at the body of christ and there's too much pressure to defend our ego let, let them not say it's me that carry this you know see everybody watch uh -uh. let them think what they want to think you have gone through a lot with god to know that honor is a mantle it's not just what you fight for if it's not on your life no matter how innocent you are you will not be honorable Do you have that track record? Please, I'm telling you this. So that when you go back home, you will kneel down and thank God for what made you cry yesterday. Something that brought tears out of your eyes has now opened you up to enough room to know God. Listen, listen. I wish what I were saying were a lie. I would have just told you sorry. But what I'm saying is so true. It's the foundation for authentic power. Are we together every time they talk of blessing you you think of your uncle you think you have faith you really don't have faith then one day your uncle leaves you and says from today uh, you are a man how old did you say you are you say Psalm 23 I'm, I'm still a child he says no you're a man from today you fend for yourself for one month you will see that there's no result meaning somebody's result was covering you corporate success can be dangerous because you can hide under it thinking you are making it worship team is doing well are you doing well you many people hide under corporate success we are anointed i know we are men of god i know life will separate you and demand from you you have to prove that you are intrinsically valuable and the key is to pass through these seasons before i continue i want you to pray one minute from your heart and say lord the let the seasons come i only ask for grace i'm no longer afraid i've been running away from it and fast forwarding my breakthrough but lord i summon courage uh -uh. if it is hunger let me go through it till i catch the key for wealth I'm tired of begging up and down. Lord, let these seasons bring me to the anointing. I know. I know. Oh. The Bible says after two days he will revive us. And on the third day he will raise us up. Are you praying, Koinonia? Shabbat Lord, let them come. They may be painful, but I open up my spirit. And I receive the voice of God through those experiences. 
they may be embarrassing but Lord I need an encounter I need to know you for myself are you praying I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear but now I know that challenges do not kill I had men say it but I know now hallelujah listen this is what makes your sermons powerful because you are speaking from a depth of conviction when you preach from pain you don't preach and you are looking whether you are right or wrong ah, I hope this thing I'm saying that's theory you went to do browsing copy and paste but when you are preaching your life and your pain blood is dripping from your life that testifies that you know what you are saying you are not advising people you are telling them the way out whether they believe or not is their cup of tea men of conviction are men who have pain they have scars that are let me tell you a scarless man is an anoint is, is, is a man who is barren of the anointing your scar is where the anointing is rubbed on it's not rubbed where there is no scar the place of scar is the point of application the balm in Gilead is not applied to a place where there is no wound that anointing when arm robbers hit someone and the Samaritan man came he rubbed oil on the places of the wounds everywhere that he did not have wound there was no need for anointing don't rub your pain there is glory coming out there don't rub your financial struggles there is an unction coming up there don't rub your barrenness let me tell you let all the naysayers preach you will find them after koinonia they will still tell you i'm talking nonsense to you you will still hear them but you continue you are going through it for them the day they will need your miracle by then you will be anointed enough to help them listen there were people who said things about me many years they never saw my face they do not even know me many years later they would come to meet me hearing about joshua selman they never knew never knew and now they saw me and compassionately like joseph ministering to his brother i would minister to them while i was going through what would give me the anointing to help them the devil was using them to criticize and talk but god said keep moving just set your face like a flint sometimes silence is the way to speak silence is the only way to speak in certain seasons i'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart tonight you catch the key i'm sharing with you you catch an unction that will change your life you are two people conscious it has stopped you from entering your no what will they say there is a way you go through something i say let them say the trouser is torn no problem you, you have gone to this this trying to live your life for people you just tell yourself it's over i'm done with it i i i know my redeemer lives if it does not bless me let me die but doing it just for my reputation is over i'm tired of trying to just be nice for people and experience so you want to worship god and you're watching that guy i like is looking at me maybe my clothes will roll maybe they will see my inner wears there is a way you go through fire and not believe you will come out before they raise the song you will lie down as if you are sleeping and start rolling on the ground roll like a mad person and people will say ah, ah david why are you rolling this way and he say, i'm rolling to the god i'm dancing to the god who took the kingdom i never knew i would be a king god took me now you just inherited joy i'll be your son's daughter you don't know what happened between me and your father god took an anointing from your father and brought it to me fill me up till i overflow i want to run i want to run fill me up
encourage everyone here. You need a personal experience with God. Listen, I speak especially for the men. You cannot live a lifetime of conviction without encounters. You will bend to your convictions left, right and center. Because the devil will throw everything at you. You must have a story in your life that you can tell your children. And say in 1971, I thought I would be eaten by this disease. But I'm standing strong. Satan, where were you in 1971? If I didn't die then, I would not die now. We have boastful confessions in the body of Christ without an experience that sponsors our conviction. Oh, if my ministry does not grow in one year, let it be that I'm not called of God. And you are there ranting and speaking nonsense. The key is not English. The key is not Rema. The key is a track record. When blood drips from you, then the oil comes through it. The anointing is for the place of pain. I'm speaking to someone here. The anointing is for the place of pain. No scars, no anointing. No scars, no grace. No scars, no testimony. No scars. No unction. That's how it works. You can preach another message to yourself. But I tell you if it is power you look for. I show you the way it comes. A track record. The cave of Adulam. Seasons of pain. Seasons of travail. As soon as Zion travails. As soon as she begins. The contractions that come to a woman. It's not a sign that she's a stupid woman. It will make her uncomfortable. She will get up and be walking around. When she goes to the hospital, they will make her do exercise. She will do stupid things. Her husband will be there. She will act as if she's out of her sense. A baby is coming. When that baby comes, so come visitors everywhere for the sake of the baby. You are gathered here today. Because somebody did not allow this training to pass. You are gathered here today because there is blood dripping from someone's altar. We, who will gather in your own meeting because of the price you are paying? You think it will happen? Something for nothing is witchcraft. You are joking. There is a track record. With all the greed in you, with all the pride and the self-centeredness you want the anointing no sir you will pass through that furnace i guarantee you i guarantee you while you are crying god will only supply grace he will not take you out but if you can walk and finally step out at the other end you will be a vessel unto honor it is at that point you will think a thing and God will do it. You have not prayed. You are thinking, God, I think I need, I need 50,000. Someone says, God said I should give you. It's a realm. You don't claim it. You qualify for it. There are things I've, I'm seeing in my life now. I wanted them many years. But I did not know that the track record had not created room for them. God kept telling me, forget about these things. Just keep walking with me. Today, I wonder. I didn't even know when they came. The track record. Oh Lord, make me a kingdom financier. And then God tells you to sew all your clothes and everything. And then people pity you. You feel like an idiot. You work so hard. And God tells you to give it away. And God said, you say, but God, why are you not doing it for someone else? I thought you said you wanted the wealth mantle. You think it's just about wearing designers? You are joking. There is a fullness of affliction. You make others rich and remain poor. A season comes, God will say, the season is full. Your cup is full and your heavens are open. And men say, where is this coming from? It's a mystery. See, 
these are the men you talk about them you bring causes on yourself believe me when i tell you this thing there are men you speak about them literally god will, they don't cause you their covenant the blood that has come out from their life is still on an altar it, it has a throne in heaven this is what produces miracles these things you are seeing this is not by faith it's a covenant god vows to back you as far as this is concerned so you can go to the nations you don't need to ask them whether they believe god in the church you just need to go you carry your altar you carry your covenant and then you bless the world do you have an encounter with god do you know him not jesus of nazareth do you know him do you know him do you know him i cried for a revelation of him not just a vision of jesus an experience so when i say god is a good god something in me should be able to explain it when i say god is a deliverer I should be able to say how many are they that rise up against me many are they which say where is his help i should be able to say but thou O lord art a shield for me you're my glory my glory not just koinonia's glory my glory i know you can lift my head i went through hell men said bury him but you brought me out that was david for you david was a man who knew god you see why he knew God he went through more pains than any king he went through more disappointment to an extent that God said you will not build me a temple he would have been offended he said God I know you too much I know you too much to complain I will gather the money for my son speaking to you too many believers who don't know God we brag around thinking because we have little anointings here and there brother you need a track record that blood you are running away from must come out no it must come out if it came out of the son of god it must come out of his body the sufferings of christ and the glory that follows i show you a virgin path that many people may never follow they don't like it they like the anointing they like the charismatism they like the influence but they do not like the track record A man can get to a level where if he prophesies to you and it's a mistake God will make that mistake come to pass because there is a covenant he has tied his integrity to so they can just look at you and say be blessed you have entered the creative dimension of your work with God where you don't just reveal things you create them it's a realm I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart not many men of God will teach you this thing I'm telling you because many people consider it to be the hallmark of their ministry it's like a man coming to tell you bedroom secrets between you and the wife no sensible married man will just carry anybody outside and come and tell you bedroom secrets what I'm telling you now is the mystery responsible for any great man most men of God I understand why they create a system and never share it I don't think it's pride they value the blood that drips from them it takes love for you to hear what I'm teaching you and you must love God to appreciate it just like there are some of you looking and say wow this is very interesting look if I were you I would stop rushing my life I really will stay with God see if you seek him you will find him we are not seeking him we are seeking things around him when fasting is still a problem you are seeking him you are joking god will say separate yourself two days i want to talk with you ah oh god i beg please you are there i bind that spirit and i'm not talking of some hilarious things after tonight's meeting you say i'm going 60 days all that is religion because it's not directed you will only starve yourself for nothing number two this will be probably one of the greatest messages you would have been heard in this 2016 
if you walk with what I'm teaching you, you will command results in a way that will scare you. Believe me. Remember, I gave us a scripture that is a verse of comfort. And the child grieved. So you don't have to sit down and think some people were born like that. Nobody was born like that. And Jesus grieved. John grew so you can grow. Benny Hinn grew. Kenneth Copeland grew. You must grow. You will not just become, you will grow. Number two, the second advantage of seasons of travail in our lives, the second advantage is that it impacts upon your life understanding understanding a comprehension of the secrets of God listen there are secrets in God that only when you are the lowest point of your life you will see them there are things God has shared with me today I will know I, well let me not say no mortal man there is nobody that may ever get to hear it you will not even believe it there are secrets that until you get to a level with God if it does not show, even you yourself will not believe it. Listen. We take truth from faith to faith. There are mysteries that surround this kingdom that control results and power. When you are there with God, it affords him the opportunity to show you certain deep things that when you were high there, you would not have believed. But now that you are there, you will hear. understanding the comprehension of the secrets of God the Bible says the secret things belong to the Lord right the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him and he will reveal his covenant look at me <laughs> read this Bible from Genesis to Revelation I promise you I promise you there are things you will never see. Pain is a key in the spirit. There are doors that only pain can open. Believe me, brothers and sisters, believe me on this. There are times you go through seasons in your life. When you go through those seasons in your life, then certain scriptures open up. The Lord is my shield and my salvation. Who shall I be afraid of? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom? And it now makes sense. Ah, I now see. Better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere. I rather be a doorkeeper. All of a sudden, it will be as if you have written books. But now you are seeing things. There are things I've seen this year that I literally had to stop and I started crying. I said, my God. There are things I said by the Spirit in Koinonia teachings that not even me had come into the fullness of the comprehension of it. I have looked at them. Ah, Psalm 54 verse 7. For he had delivered me out of all trouble and my eye had seen his desire on my enemies. Do you have an experience that can explain that? A thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side. None shall harm you, only will you stand and see. Have you seen that? That's why the name of Jesus doesn't make any, any impact for many people. We shout Jesus like a champ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the glorious name of Jesus. It's not in English. That name reacts to something. See, let me tell you. There are men that are deeply respected in the realm of the spirit. Satan knows what makes him respect men. It's not English. When you see a man walking in this realm of the spirit, 
full of scars blood dripping down as a symbol of his sacrifice to communicate his desire to let the multifaceted dimensions of God be hosted in him they are the kinds that he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm they are the kinds that are unkillable they will match a charm and pass even the charm knows it will not work it's not try maybe I'm, I'm trying to make the charm work no no it's a realm that is the realm where they can look and say no sickness can touch me you know we mock ourselves in the body of christ oh i, I mean I, I can't be sick and we're just joking do you know at what level in the spirit that word becomes activated in your life every prophecy have, has levels just like in our environment there, there are certain conditions for certain things to happen don't just speak because you saw it in the bible are we together and so there are so many men of god today they carry their hands lay it on sick people and say i'm anointed and after five years they carry the diseases on the people not by airborne disease the mystery of transference because they do not know that you must truly sustain a higher potential the bible says lay hands suddenly on no man lest thou be a partaker just by laying hands you can partake listen in your walk with God there are secrets God will show you they are not for public consumption they are not doctrines they are secrets he reveals to you to guide the delivery of the grace he has put upon you it will mislead people when these secrets become public not necessarily because they are demonic but it is a unique dealing of God to you William Branham had a secret with God where his angel will appear when he saw that angel in a healing meeting it was a sign to him that the prophetic mantle was activated then he will begin to heal and prophesy now if you sit down and walk like that you will get into witchcraft something else will appear to you are we together now because that was a unique dealing a portion for Kenneth E. Hagin it is in the secret place as you walk with God you begin to learn certain anointings he will train you with certain sensations just for you to know what kind of anointing is in the building now you can't write a book on it you will bring people into error he will show you when the healing anointing is there he will use your body parts as keys to symbolize to you you will your your organs of interaction with the spirit will be heightened they are personalized dealings with the spirit so when you come for a meeting you stand near someone you can know that there is witchcraft at work not just because you saw a spirit a code was given to you in the secret place and God says whenever you have this sensation is the presence of a demon spirit for someone else that sensation can mean breakthrough is coming it's like jam questions you see how they mix them your question one is someone's question ten that's how it is in the spirit he may you may feel heat in your hand and say it's healing anointing no it is your secret place that gives you your own question paper and god tells you for you this experience means breakthrough is coming oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. minister to people sometimes you see me laying hands on people and sometimes I can just stand there are there are things your body becomes a superconductor of his glory you can feel the impulses of God's desire he can move in any way he wants with you but we never remain in the secret place until we get that depth of understanding I don't just mean understanding of quoting scriptures the secret meaning to truths in scripture you can stay with God and the moment you see someone coming 
you know that this man will destroy me is you didn't have a vision there is a dealing with god there is an impulse you know that this car is going to have accident i will come out it's not just out of fear hi why have i been feeling like a cow no 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 no, no. i'm not talking about that i'm talking about a sensation you get up and you can know my elder sister is in trouble you were trained in the secret place i show you mysteries physically you just see men doing things but i wish your eyes would be open in the spirit they are like robots wires from eternity connected to different parts of them that communicate several impulses of the spirit that's how sometimes i can know the exact point where the holy ghost will touch someone i can stop my preaching and as i'm opening my mouth the anointing is touching the person it's a training it's not guessing you try doing it it's not guessing that level of precision comes in the secret when he visits you he tells you this is a key to this one of the things you will get still on point two is he will now reveal to you the unique role you have to play in his end time agenda no 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 you have to get to that point where god now tells you look david dam come i have passed you through seasons and then he tells you david dam this was what it was all about you're going to take the worship the healing power of god through worship to the nations that is your mandate downloaded it's not just the issue of talent alone it's the issue of the seasons in your life bringing you to a place where he now gives you the blueprint and he says david Dan, you will be a mistral you will speak my purposes to nations and while he's downloading it you are dear tiny you but an experience has qualified you for a mantle something comes on your life you may not even realize when it came all of a sudden you will find out that you go for a meeting and all of a sudden you are worshiping and the prophetic starts manifesting dramatic results and healings all of a sudden someone calls you and says sorry we're in uk we just listened to your album we are ready to pay for everything you have been fasting for open door you even try to join a site that will help to facilitate your travel the door was not open in the spirit now it has been opened the nations will call you I want to show you how men rise in the spirit when you rush physically whereas the door is closed in the spirit you will frustrate yourself and go around and come back to the same point your unique role as you are seated here looking at me can you stand up right now and say apostle I know what my role is in God's end time agenda I'm an intercessor my experiences with God has revealed this to me that he has called me to through the ministry of intercession birth the purposes of God in the lives of men and nations have you found it I was in Kano preaching at a PFN um, conference a few months ago hey, Jimmy, I met a woman for the first time in my life who finishes her Bible every month she said sometimes in 11 days she finishes by word of knowledge I called her out even me I don't finish my Bible like that read your Bible and finish in a month you know how hard it is to read these things that's to tell you it's not an ordinary book you have finished books more for luminous than this but what is it about this that you cannot just finish it's not a story book when the Spirit of God comes upon it there is a lot here there is a reaction to your spirit that will force you to not rush it there is a level of building you must have with god to be able to read your bible and finish it this woman finishes her bible every month without fail it's something i've not done i don't know if there's any man i, I may be wrong but i don't know who finishes your bible every month cover to cover then start again here is a quiet woman it's a track record with God you will be surprised something happened to her life maybe her child died maybe she lost her job and she said Lord 
since nothing is working in my life let me pick my bible all of a sudden she stumbled across the mantle of her destiny and now this woman is an intercessor when i saw her i was almost saying ma i can pay your house rent if need be to just include me to be part of your prayer point i have met a few women a few women maybe i think there, there should be one here one mama they believe that part of their life's assignment is to pray for me constantly then that is the greatest gift you can give me you can buy me a car you can buy me a house those things are mundane but to have men and women when i'm when i'm i'm just moving around traveling by air whatever i'm sleeping somebody's awake constantly touching heavens for me say mystery but there are men like that there are others who are financial apostles they are the ones who will fund god's end time agenda there are ladies here your prophetic destiny is tied to your marriage that's why god is so strict with you other women can marry anybody but for you you are like esther so because of that there are certain things that must happen in your life god will not allow certain things to happen you will be saying god but why me he says because Esther must marry a Hazarus for Israel to be free, and so it will not just be anyhow. Oh, 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 must learn this everything about your life can be connected to prophecy but these seasons will reveal them to you every man that tries to ask you out he just leaves it may not all be demonic is because you have been separated there is a mantle on you you have been separated you may not know but I say it again Esther must marry a Hazarus so that Israel will be free it's not about marriage and children the bible does not discuss the children of ahazaros and esther it's not necessary haman is a beast that wants to destroy the the israel of god and it will take an esther so god will separate you other people may be moving god will say for you stay here oh god where are you going with me the secret place will reveal it So that you stop judging everything as delay oh god i'm going through delay in my life all my colleagues are married do you not see what is upon you do you not see that there is a mantle and that's what controls the things that happen around your life while you are seated i want you to pray in one minute and say lord what is my role in your end time agenda make it clear please pray Please pray, Shabbatakata. Lande Kretos Kalabai. Why do you visit me in the night with songs of worship? Where are you going with this melody, so God? Is it just to watch an album or is there more? Where am I going with these songs of worship? What is the meaning of all these visions? You wake me up in the night. I can't sleep sound. You are showing me things. To what end, oh God? Where are you driving my destiny to? Why am I so passionate about finances? Is it just to prosper? Or is there more? Is there a mantle upon my life that must release a resource for God's end time agenda? I thought it was all about business. I thought it was all about wealth. But could there be that there is a prophetic anointing upon it? Show me my role. Why have you given me influence? Why do I meet great men everywhere I go to? Why do men of 
influence want to talk to me is there an anointing upon my life is there a mantle that will be used in this end time why have you given me unusual influence why have you given me access why am i so compassionate could there be a prophetic explanation The third advantage, we're rounding up. When all is said and done, you get to the place of the anointing. That was what it was all about. Listen to me. The pain is a journey. The pain is not an end. The pain is a door leading you somewhere. Finally, you get to that place where all is prepared your body has been prepared now to carry grace your marriage has been prepared to fulfill god's agenda you get to a point where god tells you all the relocation was all about the anointing all the activity was all about the anointing you've been a graduate for 15 years no job it was all about the anointing all about the anointing I seek an agenda that is bigger than your needs thank you for aligning yourself it was painful but now that you have gotten here then you will encounter grace the ancient mystery that came upon ordinary men and turned them into signs and wonders that is not just an ordinary impartation of falling down and standing up your spirit is now programmed to begin to host possibilities. Possibilities. That is the realm where your voice becomes like the voice of God. You speak and it rattles the foundations of men's destiny. It's not about oratory. There is an authorization that comes upon your life on the strength of this sacrifice. Listen to me. There are two dimensions of receiving impartation. The first is a direct impartation from God because there are certain anointings that are new and your secret place will be the first to introduce that possibility of God. So there is no physical vessel carrying it to release it to the earth. You will be the first to enter a covenant with God that will reveal that possibility. Listen, please look at me. Not every mantle that should be on earth is already on earth not every mantle that should be on earth was recorded here in the bible there are mantles that are still yet to come there are graces that are still yet to come the gift of the spirit is not nine only nine were revealed there are many more there are many more expressions of the spirit seeking for men let me tell you it is important you understand this there are many other possibilities of God. The anointing is like rain. It moves from Asia to Africa, seeking for vessels that are worthy enough for its landing. And it doesn't find any, and it goes to the continent. May Africa keep it. Because there are certain graces, there are things God has been wanting to do on earth, but the anointing moves like a plane not finding a place to land the same way demon spirits go around restless that's how the, the certain dimensions of god's mantle are restless they are looking for bodies bodies a body has thou prepared for me when you go through this season then it comes oh for when it comes upon you then you will begin to manifest things that you will never believe possibilities you will change things that's when you can look at someone's jump score and say what did you get he says 141 and you say i change it he goes to check and sees 276 no 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 at that level they are not clapping for a man of god you have represented a system that brings the possibilities of god to people i'm showing you how to be a blessing it's not just by giving people sewing machine 
you must carry an anointing God keeps telling me every time son if you will give me more room there is still so much I can do with you you know sometimes when he says these things I just start weeping because I just sit down and say my God so there is more there is more there are challenges that some of you may have that we have not yet accessed the level of grace to reveal Christ to you in that dimension we can choose to camp around this mediocrity or still press and say there is more there is more when people act as if they have arrived I am shocked so a direct encounter in Exodus chapter 4 Moses had a direct encounter his mantle came directly from God no one had done what he was about to do and so God had to give him the impartation directly but the second dimension is impartation through the ministry of men we are not strange to this understanding i've taught it here and there and i've taught you that men are systems in the realm of the spirit they are not just human beings they represent systems let me reiterate what i said in one of the meetings watch this i told you that spiritual growth is through relationship hear me but kingdom advancement is through covenant if you did not understand it that time Maybe you have grown enough to get it now. Let me repeat it. I said that our walk with God, spiritual growth is based on relationship. But the advancement of the kingdom, God's end time agenda is based on covenant. And the second law is that God reveals himself dimensionally. He reveals portions of himself and commits portions of himself to people. But the system with which he brings that about is that when God intends to reveal himself in a way, he must find a man. When he finds a man, listen, he enters a personal covenant, not Old Testament, not New Testament, a personal covenant with that man. And that covenant with that man becomes his authorization for revealing that dimension of him to that dispensation. Nobody in that dispensation will encounter that dimension of Christ ignoring what that individual represents. You must pass through him or a tribe that is connected to him for you to enter that dimension. So when you look at the healing ministry on earth today, for instance, you trace it down to different men of God, it finally lands on Benihi. He is the living system that represents God's healing power to the nations today. And until Benihin goes to be with the Lord, no matter how anointed you are, you will still make reference to his covenant with God that represents that territorial dimension of healing. Are you getting the point now? The word of faith, you go down to people like David Ibiome, you know, Bishop Oyedeko, and it lands finally on Kenneth Copeland. He is the living system that represents the communication of God's ministry of faith on earth. But there are much more. There are other possibilities God wants to reveal. He has not yet found a man who can align to reveal that possibility. Because the heavy persecution that will come on that man for being the first to introduce that dimension. Listen, let me tell you. No, it's not something I say in the open when you understand this mystery then you will know the reason why you must be prepared to carry the anointing the anointing will bring certain grave grave levels of hostility in your life that if you are not built by god you will die men who introduced all of the movements we know in the body of christ some of them it was until they died many years after they had died other people who were the fruits of their mantle stumbled across their books and they said my god 50 years ago this man wrote this now he's dead do you know there are many things kenneth e hagin wrote and many of the generals is now the church is understanding them we read them and even edited them but now we are seeing that ah this is it many years ago 
John G. Lake said, you know, the casting out of devils also produces manifestations. They insulted him and they said manifestations are only impartations. John Lake knew what he was seeing. He was describing a dimension of the deliverance ministry that was not yet known. But right now, it is like the last 10 years that that ministry just started coming to Africa. But they were men with the eyes of the eagle. They had seen it. Do you know there are many things, some of you here, you go back to your notebooks and read messages you listened to in 2001. That's when you will scream and say, do you mean I was under this anointing and I did not recognize it? Encounters. See, if you want to move more than having an anointing to becoming a spiritual system, it's not a very attractive life. Your entire life is a lonely one. The, the course of life that everyone follows, you may never have the privilege to enjoy it. There are certain men on earth today who carry an anointing called a kingmaker anointing. I never knew there was such an anointing until God taught me. Let me tell you the price for carrying a kingmaker anointing. You will never enjoy what the anointing carries through you, but you will make others have it. There are men like that. Their churches will never be large, yet they will produce the largest churches on earth. Their crusades may never have signs and wonders, but they will transfer the deepest miracle working anointing. It's a kind of anointing. If you don't know it, you will say they don't have the results you are looking for. Be careful. There are dimensions. It's a kind of grace. Paul said, so then death works in us. Paul was never married in his lifetime, but he taught married people how to live. That's the kingmaker anointing. It brings you into a realm that the person himself does not have the privilege to ever enjoy it. Like the woman who spoke to me, a woman who probably had never held 100,000 of her money, but she said, my son forever walk upon gold. That's a kingmaker anointing. It will be many years in my life walking with God, I will now realize that so this is what was released. That mama never knew she carried it. Only God knows where she is on earth now. Maybe she's seated as we are talking right now. She's trusting God to raise 200 naira for her. But she has produced a wonder through the anointing in her life. There are men you ignore. They carry things they are not authorized to benefit from it. But they will give it to you. Ah, There are mysteries in this kingdom. There are mysteries in this kingdom. So a woman who never had a good home, never had a good home, but there is a mantle upon her. When she blesses your marriage, that pain is what authorized that anointing to walk in her life. So you can see all her children haywire. Seven children, they are all touts. And you say this woman must be irresponsible, but she may be the greatest prayer warrior you ever know. There is a woman who lost her husband her marriage failed when she was 20 called Anna the prophetess for 64 years she was in the temple interceding you would think what kind of prophetess are you that you could not solve your problem that was a kingmaker anointing when Jesus was born he said my eyes have seen the salvation of Israel now Lord let me go to rest all I was waiting for I may not experience his ministry in my lifetime but my job was to bring him here. We are going to pray. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to move to the next level spiritually. The anointing is what we need to bring the love of Jesus to nations. How God anointed Jesus. Jesus said, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. Doctors, you need the anointing of the spirit. If you treat patients with what you were taught alone, you will watch many patients die in your hands. You need more than injection and, and, and stethoscope. You need a grace. Businessmen, if all you think you want to do is real estate and make money and do all of this, you are going to be in trouble because there are forces. You need the anointing. You need the anointing to marry. You need love to marry foolishly and anyhow. 
but you need the anointing for your marriage to strike a chord for Esther to marry a Hazarus so that Israel will be saved Esther needed an anointing not just beauty there was a kind of ointment she rubbed on herself for one year before she became married you will need more than reading if your education is to bring the glory of God you can read to get 4.69 but you need more than that God will ask you to vow a vow and say for as long as I live I will use my certificate to bless you and you say yes you will answer two questions and still get an A because it was never about your effort you have a deal with God so the covenant from that sacrifice has kicked into you a man will vow to fail you and his life will go haywire in one week not because you are so prayerful he is the keeper of his covenant this was part of what I preached in the conference and the Lord said I should bring it home and speak to us again brothers and sisters the time you carry the anointing that can solve men's problems truly you have earned the right to be a blessing stop sympathizing with people you have done it too much press 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 like the woman with the issue of blood let them say whatever they want to say but can you press through the crowd and carry something authentic So you thank God for not allowing you to start ministry yet. You would have just been like any other man. Little signs and wonders. 12 members today, 20 tomorrow, 5 next tomorrow. Then you now join the bandwagon of critics who are frustrated by they are not pressing. Listen, stop trying to change things around you. Something on you is what will change everything around you. Stop trying to change things around you. Something on you something on you something on you favor will not come just because you know all the people favor will come because there is something on you that will call them are we together five minutes you are going to play worship for us I don't know whether you want to lie down whether you want to cry but for the next five minutes I'm leaving you and God alone I want you to flock it in a time of intense prayer and intercession. If I see you choking and looking at me, I'll come and hold your hands. You are going to cry to God and say, My life, my destiny. Lord, the unction for my destiny. You are alone. I'm going to be crying to God too. So it's a moment of intercession. Five minutes. Give us worship. Play. Everybody just cry to God.
Surprised to see what he will make out of your mind. The anointing does not just come. I taught you that the anointing works like money. Listen very carefully. That you only can solve spiritual problems or problems that are within the level of the grace you carry. The same way you can have 10,000 naira. 10,000 naira can buy you a few things. It cannot buy you a car. It cannot buy you a house, but it is still money. If you need to buy a house, you need more of the same thing. To the amount that can purchase the house, every challenge in the realm of the spirit has a level of grace and anointing that can solve it. Just because you are anointed does not mean all problems will bow. I gave an example yesterday while I was teaching in Abia and I told them that you can bring someone for instance in a wheelchair and keep the person outside and a man of God can even lay hands on the person and the person may not be healed. He will go back sick. Are we together now? You take the same person and keep that person in Benny Hinn's overflow. Not the main bowl. Overflow. And right there he comes and whilst he's singing, the person gets up. The difference is not God. The difference is the extent of the anointing. How God anointed Jesus. Not that Jesus was anointed. The information is not that he was anointed. Look at the extent to which he was anointed. You are a blessing when you stay with God to be anointed. To the degree to which most problems that come are under the level of your grace. People have come to me and with all humility, as soon as they begin to talk, I discern what their challenges are and I know that this problem is far, far below the level of the grace that I have. Sometimes I would not even pray. I would say, go, it's done. So the, the man of God's assignment is that while you are building your expectation, while you are paying so much to transport yourself to be here, while you are fasting and opening your heart, our own assignment is to stay with God, to say, I've seen your grace before, but evil is multiplying. There are situations that know there are superior levels of graces that can solve it. When someone loses 10 million naira, and comes to you and says I'm about to die I don't know whether I'm alive or not but the last time they told me I was dying help me at that point that's not the time to start teaching him and say okay be patient this is you can teach him financial principles but he needs that raven that fed Elijah to come to him quick let the raven feed him first when someone tells you my life it's not moving forward all doors are closed and because of that my father is about to leave my mother they have concluded that the divorce will happen in the month of may that's not the time to settle down and start saying oh this and that line upon line precept they are, they are, a, a family is about to be torn apart oh how we need the power of god in this generation we need the power of god more than falling down we need the power of God more than the jargons and the stories that we talk. Let me tell you, in the final analysis, 
it is his divine power that is the giver and if that power is not resident within you to the degree that it takes to provide supernatural solutions then you will continue to see people frustrated if you're a man of god and you came here listen to me you are not a blessing when you are not anointed let me repeat myself you are not a blessing when you are not anointed you may be a good person you may be a sincere person it takes more than sincerity to be a blessing the messianic prophecy isaiah chapter 61 please give it to us isaiah chapter 61 the spirit of the lord is upon me and then it says because the lord hath anointed me the lord had done what please talk to me koinonia the lord had anointed me so the factor there is the anointing and then it begins to list all the possibilities that can now happen on account of the anointing it takes the anointing to preach glad tidings to the meek it takes the anointing to bind up the brokenhearted. It takes the anointing to proclaim liberty. It doesn't take a mouth to proclaim liberty. It takes the anointing. You can have the mouth and say, be free. But it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives. It takes the anointing to open up prison doors. Next verse. It takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and then the year of vengeance of our god look up please it takes the anointing to comfort all those who mourn verse 3 to appoint to them that mourn in zion so even in zion there are those who mourn it didn't say to appoint to them that mourn outside zion they are in Zion, yet they are mourning. To give them beauty. Look at what the anointing can do. Hi. The anointing, please listen, listen, families, listen. The anointing can give a man beauty. Beauty, beauty for ashes. Many families know what ashes looks like. When a family has 10 people and no one is employed, when a family has 10 people and the highest earner in that family earns 2,000 per month, ashes. But the Bible says by the anointing, you can give men beauty. Beauty. You came for koinonia with ashes and God says, keep your ashes here. Take beauty. As you are sharing the grace, you are walking out with it. And then you continue to see your life. You know you have carried beauty by the results that follow. It says, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. Then it says, the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine. And then the fruitful vine counted for a forest. Beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And then it says that they might be called the trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. God is still beautifying the lives of people. My brothers and my sisters, don't get used to your situation. I know you've trusted God in spite of it. But God wants you to now continue trusting him without it. It's, it's honorable and it is noble to trust God in spite of it. But what if he takes the pain away? What if he takes the situation away? What if he takes the predicament away? It takes a wicked man of God to watch what is going on in this country. And to watch what is going on in the times that we live in. And act as if nothing is happening to people. There are real problems. Poverty is a real problem. Young people now have high blood pressure because after spending 10 years for a four-year course and graduating with a 2-1, you are roaming around the street like an arm robber with your certificate that seems to have no value. Look at the, you know, we, we've, we've been talking about, I don't know if it's happening only in Zaria, but we've been talking about the increased rate of suicide, especially among young people. 
when you sit down and try everything and it does not work you just tell yourself i'm better off dead and you at least my money cannot rent a house but it can buy a rope what can it buy a rope and the spirit of death will help you to buy a rope and you find a tree and hang yourself and you who should have been a blessing to a family has now died and then people come to church with that kind of pain and the man of God says don't worry it's not all about your needs it's about Jesus I agree it's about Jesus but man was not designed to bend that law indefinitely there has to be an opportunity given when the spirit of the Lord will step into the lives of people I will never never watch people go through things that the power of God can change and act as if nothing can be done about it no sir whoever told you that the power of God cannot do anything about the demons that oppress families whoever told you that the yokes of darkness can remain unhindered I know you have prayed I know you have fasted but I've told you why it did not happen it takes a level of grace Whoever told you favor has stopped working. Don't generalize pain. There are men who have found Goshen, a place of safety. There are men who have found Bethel. There are men whose lives are like Beulah and Hephzibah. The planting of the Lord. When God plants a garden, will it not grow? He says the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. This is the place of encounter. I want you to know that this is a place where God increases your convictions. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where your life will change do to me what you want listen when the lord turn again the captivity of your family when the lord turn again the captivity of your destiny he says we were like them that dream how beautiful is it to see the other side of pain how beautiful is it to see the other side of a man's trusting God? How beautiful it is to see a man trusting God for grace. Lord, I know you still anoint men, but where is the anointing? When you see the other side of that man. How beautiful it is to see a wilderness turn into a fruitful vine and turn into a forest. I believe in miracles. I believe in the hand of God. I believe the supernatural can invade the world of men and correct and adjust things. I believe in 24 hours God can change a man's life. Listen, I believe in the law of process, but I believe in speed too. I believe God still lifts men. I believe God still uses men to make statements in a territory. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And God says, come, let me use you. Let me show men that I am still God, the lifter of men. I believe this. I believe that God is a healer. I believe he's a deliverer. I believe when men lose things, they can get it back. Yes, sir. Including time. Including time. I believe that when men lose things, they can get it back. I believe God can anoint ordinary men. Men who are just available. But the level of grace is not there. But I know there is a place a man can come to where you encounter the power of God. Everywhere is not the same. No. No. God is everywhere, but he does not manifest his power everywhere. I believe in the power of God. I was sent not only to reveal his face, 
but to reveal his power to let men know that he's still alive to correct misunderstandings about God please listen to me I want to charge your faith before we pray I believe that challenges can end I believe that problems can end did you hear what I said I believe a man can sit down and search left and right and only see the goodness of God I believe it I believe it I believe prosperity is real I don't believe prosperity destroys a Christian I believe in the blessing of the Lord I believe in what it can do to your family I believe in what it can do to your children I believe in what it can do to your health I know poverty causes sickness I know it causes worry nobody will preach into embracing nonsense no I believe a man can prosper even as his soul prospers I believe in speed I believe God can compress what should happen in five years in one month I truly believe it I truly believe it I believe God can restore time when a woman has been barren for seven years if she gives birth to one baby we thank God but it's not a statement enough when she gives birth to triplets God took nine years of space in three three years and compressed it in one year now that's victory over time the hardiness of the hearts of men will require some dimensions of results to break their pride to honor God please listen let me tell you we are not going to use stories and noise to get people to Jesus wealth is a weapon the anointing is a weapon favor is a weapon mercy is a weapon wisdom is a weapon what are you fighting with desire you will not win it takes you being equipped with the spiritual arsenals that have been made for the victory of the saints in light the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified I believe a man can weary the devil to a point where he will let you go I believe you can live in a territory and create your own climate financially spiritually I believe it listen out of everything I'm saying throw away the ones you don't believe and open your heart to the ones you believe I believe a believer can serve God better in an atmosphere of comfort when your children's school fees are paid you will serve God better don't let religion come with the pride of men and pretend that it does not matter yes I know that none of these things should affect our love for God but let me tell you the truth there is a level of pain you continue to have that can harden your heart towards God it takes time to know God it takes time to serve God and that's the time the devil does not want to give you you will never have time to serve God when you are moving around chasing money you will never have time to serve God when you are moving around lobbying a way to live to be lifted vain is the help of man people of God please hear me God did not gather us tonight to waste our time he gathered us tonight to make real the things in our lives that pertain unto life and godliness. Can I tell you this? Whether you believe in what I said or not, it does not change the truth. The truth was buried. It took only three days. It came out. So whether you believe in the truthfulness of what is said or not, you embrace poverty and see what it does to your life and your family. Embrace mediocrity and see what it does embrace sickness and see how much you will spend per week your entire resources when you are finally broke then the person will die is that sickness
Why will it ten, take 10 years to build one house? Is that a testimony? A prostitute will sleep with a man overnight and wake up by the next day with estates and houses and everything. Let's be careful the things we say about God because many of them are not true. Please hear me, especially for our precious visitors. Don't magnify your challenges and come hoping God will change your life. We're talking God here, not a doctor, not a consultant, not an architect, not a monarch, the God of the universe. You may not be sick in your body, but who told you he cannot change your life? Do you not know he's called the father of spirits? That God can speak to a man while you are here and compel him to bless you. That God can give you a dimension of grace that you didn't enter this building with you and you turn back and on Sunday you climb your pulpit as usual and suddenly fire a new dimension of grace do you believe in what I'm sharing if you being evil know how to give good gifts let me tell you you can hold on to the hands of God and say it was never about your hands it was about your heart but tonight, I need your hands too. In addition to your heart, step in over my life. Step in. Please don't give up on God. Wake up. Don't give up on God. Don't come here hoping. I've waited, waited. The God of heaven can compress time. If you don't believe all this, there's no point being here tonight. Because we are going to pray. And you must insist that tonight is not the night when I will clap for anybody. I came to mean business with my destiny. Listen. When we begin to pray, I'd like you to insist that anything that does not bring glory to God in your life must leave this night. No matter what it is. Some of you may need to rewrite your prayer request again. Because of your pain, you've stopped writing some things. You just concluded that God, this one, just, just leave this issue. No. When it was time to resurrect Lazarus, he said, roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. Prove that you believe in resurrection by rolling away the stone. Two things men did. They rolled away the stone and they lose the man. What if they lose Lazarus and they found out he was not alive or he just fell and collapsed? Your destiny must open up tonight. Yeah. It's not a blessing for people to doubt. The Bible says to be diligent in these things. To prove your calling and election. To make it sure. There are things that must be in your life. To validate your call and your election. If you're a man of God here, trust God for grace. For God's sake. Just go and stand before people and just open a scripture and speak and close it and say let's pray no that's what the scribes did all the time but Jesus came and opened and read the messianic prophecy and he said today this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes they thought they would share the grace he closed it and he told the guy with the withered hand he said stretch your hands these things I write to you O excellent Theophilus of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not teach alone. Do and teach. Can we pray? Please find a serious neighbor. And I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. The gift is only given to them that ask. God cannot assume you desire it. Please lift your voice in one minute.
and cry to the God of heaven. Outside, pray. Those following online, pray. Lord, visit me. Lord, visit me. Appear to me by your word as it were in Shiloh. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your business. Pray over your career. Pray over your destiny. Lord, I came that the gates be open tonight. Elam Shalaka Sala Kaparatus, Embra Kato Sekede Kaparianda Kapariasha. Pray, pray. That devil must leave my destiny today. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Pray, pray, don't look around. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Place something upon my life, oh God. Place something upon my destiny, upon my business, upon my church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. And the Lord will set this place on fire. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Read with me please if you are a believer. One, two, read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, do to me as you have spoken. You said many things about my life. Do it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. Do to me as you have spoken. You said I am the head and not the tail. Do to me. You said with favor shall you encompass me as a shield. Do to me. You said you will restore the years the canker worm has eaten. Do to me, oh God. Pray, do to me, oh God. Visit my family. You said you will wipe away every tear. You call 2019 my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Do to me as you have spoken. Do to me, oh God. You said I will have my child in 2019. Do to me as you have spoken. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh! 
Look up. Please look up. I want you to receive every grace that the Lord is going to be releasing in this place. Because you see, let me tell you, every grace supplied to you is the strength to survive the squallow of any season. And if you do not obtain the requisite level of grace for any season, you will find out that your life will remain barren and unfruitful. Truly, I came, I came with all my heart tonight. I, I don't want it to be a miracle service that we just play around casually. Please believe for something to come upon your life. Believe for a grace to come on your life. See, this thing about anointing, if it's not there, it's not there. Period. Very simple. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. I will stand tonight praying on the grace for speed. Hold on, hold on. Please listen. There is a reason why I continue to say this. Many destinies are too slow to glorify God. Are we together now? When the devil cannot keep you at a standstill, then your progress will be so slow. It is said, I must walk the works of him while it is day. That means I need to gain time. It says, For the night cometh when no man will walk again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is a real grace for speed. If you have not seen it, it's because it's not on your life. There is a real grace for speed that vetoes the sentiments of men. So I want to pray. I want to start from there. And then we just allow the Lord to take us. Be conscious of what comes upon you. Be conscious of what comes upon you. That's how God answers prayers. He answers prayers by putting something on your life. That will compel creation to begin to act in a way and a manner that will change your life. Are we together? Please lift your hands and let me pray. I believe in the grace for speed. I have seen a measure of that grace. And I know it is true. That God can shift a man. I'm going to pray and release this grace and inside and outside that anointing and the anointing works let me just tell you the anointing works you will see people begin to run it's it's not anything superstitious it is just the character and the operation of that anointing we need it the Lord put it in my heart we need it for our businesses ministries and so on and so forth Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now, inside and outside, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I declare right now at the count of three, let this grace for speed that you have provided even for this season, let it rest on people now. I release that grace. Take that grace now. Please bring them out. Take that grace now, inside, outside, everywhere. I activate the operation of this grace. I shift your life in the name of Jesus to strength dimensions in the spirit. Receive the grace for speed. Receive the grace for Kabakatalika Parusia. Receive that grace for speed in the name of Jesus. 
and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab to Jezreel. I command speed, 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 speed. Bring them out. Speed. Hey, labor, help that woman, please. My God. Hey, la parus kamana katashikata. Embrakato zelekete brakatos. Hey, landa vras katisha lakatos. I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus. It says, ye have encompassed this mountain for too long. Turn ye not what? I prophesy again. Like, like, like fire from heaven. Let that grace for speed mantle a family now. Not just an individual. Let it come upon families. Families receive speed. I shift you. Hebereko to shatalikata. Hebereko to shatalikata. Hebereko to shatalikata. I shift you in the spirit. New level. Speed. Speed. Bring them out. Speed. You will never be the same. Never be the same. I'm not praying for individuals now. I'm praying for families. Any families stagnated here. I stand by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I prophesy speed. Inside and outside. I release speed right now. now the Lord is that spirit he says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains on people's legs chains and the Lord is saying the Lord is bringing deliverance now I'm seeing chains if you are under this category as I'm praying now the fire of God I'm seeing fire moving but not on people's heads, on people's feet. I decree and declare, is it not written that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. At the count of three, anyone whose destiny has been pegged by these chains, I declare be free now. Be free now. Let the power of God come upon you. Be free now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, be free now. I want to pray God I'm telling you I'm seeing this is I'm still seeing it chains you see let me tell you this look up look up the Bible tells us that there are many things that should happen where the Spirit of the Lord is one of it is Liberty do you know what Liberty is It's a separation between you and the obstacle that mocks God in your life there is such a thing in the dealings of God with men has given men liberty I want to pray there will be a mighty deliverance right now many of you this is what has plagued your life if it is true that victory was wrought on the cross then it's time to establish it now please listen to me just follow with the instructions be childlike in your heart and let God give you a testimony are we together now He said, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears, sowed weed among the, I meant, uh, uh, among the, 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 the wheat. And he, we are going to destroy everything. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. I'm going to pray and at the count of three, I will ask you to shout that name. My God. I don't know what kind of bondage I'm seeing this night but except God is not God you must be free right now in the name that is above all names I pray for individuals and families alike it is true that there are yokes and ordinances of darkness that have held men bound but in the name of Jesus everywhere here overflow one two three outside 
as you shout that name that is above all names I decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of God in your life and family must jump out of your destiny at the count of three one two three shout Jesus I command forces and yo go now go now release destiny release destiny every ordinance that is not the planting of God let it go now let it go now I'm speaking by what I'm seeing in the spirit let it go now I'm seeing a vision of a man with a handkerchief wiping the tears of a woman and I know that this is, is symbolic because the woman stands for the bride, the church and I'm seeing the Bible says he will wipe away every tear I don't know what family and what person came here crying but the Bible says to comfort they that mourn I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit let an anointing come upon your life now that terminates everything that brings tears that terminates everything that brings tears bring them out hallelujah young lady please shift this one you lift your hands shout Jesus as loud as you can oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, Yahweh. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah, say. Oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah Yahweh. Yahweh. Oh yeah yeah, say. My friend lift your hands this yes you the Lord is granting you the spirit of revelation I saw something come upon your eyes and the Lord is saying he's taking you to dimensions of revelation let her go now now release her family now in the name of Jesus please listen I, I know that we don't have time but please I want you to every time the Lord shows me this then I know that he wants me to move around I begin to see lights a similitude of angels by my left and right and is is a very is a very mysterious way that God moves to touch people when this begins to happen all I need to do is you don't have to touch me just move around your role listen to me except God is not God as he has anointed as I pass your role if there is anything that is not of God it must let you go are we together now so please you pray the moment we do that then we'll begin to minister to the sick these things are signs and wonders they are supernatural they are supernatural even by the spirit thank you Jesus please I just want you to believe by faith just believe by faith and then as I pass the Lord is going to touch you 
it will be the end of it's not something you can do anything about you are under the influence of the anointing are we together now thank you jesus that everything that is not of god must give way in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare right now by the power of the holy spirit let there be liberty now liberty now in the name of jesus madam be free i take it out of your life now the hand of god is upon you in the name of jesus christ receive the lord is touching you i'm seeing god's taking something out of someone's stomach here it's going now now i release it now be free now be free now be free now in the name of jesus be free now i'm seeing fire rising from this road just from i don't know who it is but fire is coming on someone from this road right now in the name of jesus i decree and declare Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Something is leaving you. I'm standing here. There is the power of the Holy Spirit is setting someone free here within this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus. Help that woman, please. She's holding a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands here. Everything that must leave anyone, I declare it must go now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please all of you here, just lift your hands. Right now I stretch my hands. Now, something is coming on people right here. Be free now. 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 Now! Keep praying, lift your voice. Overflow one, keep praying. Something is about to change in your life now. Please, you don't have to touch me. And I want you to help everybody close to you. As I pass, the anointing of the Spirit is touching everything that needs to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. 
be free now 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 that anointing is touching you right now be free be free be free be free i take it out of you right now the fire of the holy spirit right here where i'm standing right here where i'm standing the lord is taking something out of your life be free i'm standing here and the lord is saying it is over he's speaking to someone it is over an anointing is coming on you now it is over 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 Shalakata. over madam be free now the power of god is touching someone here in the name of jesus be free in the name of jesus be free be free be free be free, be free. Be free. Please help them help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves be free now in the name of jesus i declare and declare be free. be free be free be free every devil of darkness be free now. please open your heart and receive stretch my hands here anything that help be free now be free now be free now be free now in a chain a chain around here i don't know who that person is but i lose you now as i stand here i lose you now by the spirit of the living god i lose you now i lose you now hallelujah overflow one i don't know if i'm able to walk around is working now please believe it's a few minutes god is touching you you came here so that he will visit you it's impossible to not testify now please look at me overflow too i'm not going to pass in your midst i will walk right here and as i walk the power of the holy spirit will begin to touch you thank you jesus be free now be free now by the anointing of the holy spirit now 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 be free. I take away every reproach. I take away every reproach. You can't stand it. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. We're talking of the anointing here. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. I stretch my hands here. Go now. Go now. Every reproach. Sela kapara to Every reproach, go now, go now. I release your destiny. All of you standing here, I'm passing now. The power of God is coming on you. Be free. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk around. I may not go row by row. Please, let your heart be open. Please, accept God is not God. Whatever it is that has held you, as I pass by the Spirit, the power of God comes on you. Some of you will be receiving impartation. It's not everybody that is going to just be free from whatever it is. Father, in the name of Jesus, honor your word right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, be free. I may not be able to move, but please lift your hands. All of you, at the count of three, overflow three, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. The moment you shout that name, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like fire coming out of people. This is something living people. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. From the front to the be free now in the name of Jesus. I release your destiny now. I release your destiny now. Madam, look at me. I set her free now. 
release her destiny right now that woman you are holding in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus listen I declare to you I, I release speed inside I want to pray that prayer now I don't know what has slowed you down overflow three from the front to the back may the grace for speed come on you now may the grace for speed come on you now please whether you're an usher or not whether you're an usher or not help anybody under the anointing close to you in the name of Jesus I don't know what has held your destiny bound but in the name of Jesus one more time I want you to shout the name Jesus at the count of three one two three be free now be free now you came for a miracle service hallelujah hallelujah please look at me overflow three look at me hallelujah the lord is showing me a family i will soon walk out but i just want you to know you are part of and that it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside the lord is showing me a family here there is a plague of sickness everybody from father to the last child there is nobody who is fine right now as I'm speaking the power of God is coming upon that family right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ overflow 3 I'm seeing the number 21 this is the healing anointing coming on 21 people right now in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands this is not a healing miracle this is the anointing to heal right now from the front to the back upon gentlemen and upon ladies receive that grace receive that grace now receive that grace now receive that grace now please everyone overflow one two three main auditorium Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit and declare that everything the Lord is doing must find expression in your life. Lift your voice and pray.
Please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 Voice and pray. God is changing something in someone's body. A blood disease. Just right where I'm standing. A blood disease is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you, when, when we do these things, we are not wasting time at all. You need to see what the Lord um, did in some of those overflows. There are people who have real issues and sometimes, Madam, please lift your hands. I'd like you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The spirit of prayer. When I was in overflow three, I saw that grace. Would do an impartation, but it's in this season. There is a spirit of prayer and supplication that is coming upon the body of Christ, especially in Zaria. There is a spirit and there is a grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace now. There is a grace and there is a spirit of prayer that is coming upon the body of Christ. You don't pray just by self-will. There is an agency. I declare now in this main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, I stand by the spirit and I declare receive a baptism of this spirit. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. I declare capacity in your spirit man. Capacity. I swing open the door for utterance in prayer. Grace to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone in the media stand is receiving a baptism of the spirit of prayer a fresh grace a baptism of prayer hallelujah you see let me tell you this please listen one of the systems for enforcing dominion on earth is the ability to legislate in the place of prayer and when the saints cannot pray and pray with understanding then nothing will change within their territory an attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life nobody prays out of convenience there is a grace that must come upon a man to pray Hallelujah. If you are in ministry, I pray again for the grace for prayer. Let me tell you, if you are a man of God and you are not a man of prayer, you are not in ministry. Believe me, you are not in ministry. It's only a matter of time you will know you are not in ministry. I decree and declare a supply of the Spirit, an ability from heaven upon men and women of God that anyone who has the call of God upon his life whether you know it or not, the grace to pray, take it now. 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 The grace to travail, not give me tea and bread, not give me tea and bread, to pray destiny altering prayers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll quickly minister to the sick now. Um, please listen. For those of you who are coming for the first time, we usually 
take prayer requests that I pray for now. And if you have not written your prayer request, please do so. You can get a notebook or just beckon on someone by your left and right to just give you an opportunity to write. While we are doing that, please, um, I will minister to those overflow one. Okay, the main auditorium and overflow two. Please listen. Main auditorium and overflow two. Um, when I ask you to come, you will come and stand in front here. You will be ministered to right here. Overflow one, you will stand in front of your projector stand. That away from the canopy to allow for space. Now, um, will I call it overflow 2B now? The overflow that extends to second equa. Someone will come there to minister. All those who are trusting God for healings, protocol ushers, please just coordinate them. You will stand in front there and then overflow three. Um, okay, there's another overflow down towards overflow three. Um, they will join the ones at they will join the ones at um, the second equa area. So let that be a single overflow too. And then finally, overflow three. You can walk to the front of your projector stand. All of you who desire to be prayed for. We believe in the healing power of Jesus. I believe in miracles. And our time is gone. You'll be ministered to very fast. And then we'll tidy up other things. Whilst that is going on, please, we're trying to conserve time. You see that a, a standard miracle service has to really be a vigil. If you want to do a thorough walk. You're not going to be able to do a thorough walk within two or three hours. But we're trying to just do the best we can do with the time that we have. While you are coming out, please, ushers, PR, join them or any other department um, to collect the, the prayer request. Those online, you can connect by faith if you're trusting God for healing and you can submit your prayer request and then it will be prayed for here. Praise the Lord. I believe in miracles. If you have written your prayer request, um, the ushers or you'll find a few people who will lift up their hands or lift up baskets and you'll be allowed to put it there. Now, very quickly, those trusting God to be ministered to um, for any kind of healing, make your way out quickly. Just like I've designated, please, quickly, you come, stand here by faith. Overflow one in front of your projector stand. Overflow three in front of your projector stand. Overflow two. You can join um, those in the main auditorium here. I hope I'm doing the right thing. And then overflow 2B and 2C, let me call it now. 2B extending to second equa and 2C extending to the gate of the third overflow. All of you together will form one overflow and then we'll minister very, very fast. Very, very fast so that we can finish. While you are doing that, please... Please let me advise, especially for those outside, as you are walking out, make sure your phones, your bags, and any of your belongings is safe. And then help those under the anointing. God is delivering people, setting people free. And let's just let him be God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Accept the people ministering to you, ask you questions. Don't worry. Just a touch and then you'll be back to your seat and check yourself whether you're on a wheelchair or on a crutch or sitting whatever the situation is whilst they touch and they minister just expect a miracle hallelujah father we give you praise in the name of jesus within the time we have we pray that your healing power will flow let the sick be healed transform our lives visit us in a new way glorify jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let incurable situations live. And I pray, God, that you give your people testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Nigeria,
These are the guys that came from um, where? You came from Thailand. This gentleman is a professional footballer. Where's your colleague? Where are you? Come. We salute your coming. Both of them are professional footballers. What happened to your legs? Our last league match last year, so I got a fracture from it. And from there, it's affected your career. You're a footballer too. You came all the way from Thailand. You believe Jesus will heal you? These are your, you see, you cannot, I don't even know what this, this does. I asked to stop because they are, we're having some interesting cases today. Please shift. God is doing a serious miracle for this lady. Said she had, is it ovarian cancer? Ovarian what? Something like that. Mama? Oh dear. Look what God is doing. She will be healed, eh? Amen. Mm. Because when I looked at her, I did not see a pregnancy. I saw something that looked like a mass of something. This is demonic. Huh? Where are you from, madam? Where did you come from? From I'm from Kano. From Kano? Yes. Jesus. Look what is happening. Let her be healed now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. Mama, don't cry. Cancer, I speak to you. You have a name, you have a voice. Release this lady now. In the name of Jesus. My friend, look at me. You came all the way from Thailand. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God. This fractured leg, I fix it back now. You see what is happening to you? What do you feel happening to you? Huh? Look at me. Go, run. Don't mind them just focus on me if you're having pain we're not acting here huh? so if you're having any a miracle has happened to you when i held your leg i felt the power of god moving through you you see this thing you see is a very demonic thing it's not about fracture do you understand number one come my friend you're together too i want to pray for you you see god is looking for people to represent him in every sphere huh? just because you are footballers doesn't mean that you ignore God. Many footballers don't love Jesus. They love football and they love the money that comes with it. But we are not only here. God has perfected this. Let me pray on the x-ray, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this miracle remain forever. Amen. I want to pray for both of you. I will, I will see you after the service and just say hi since you came just to honor you. But listen to me. I'm sure I don't know you. I've never seen you. Can I prophesy on your career? In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, from today, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You are a footballer, but you play by the anointing, my friend. It takes more than just kicking a ball. I release the grace to excel. And for you, I release the grace to excel. Right now, two of you will return back to Thailand, and the Lord will honor you. In Jesus' name, God bless you thank you so much for your patience we're about to pray on the requests I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and I truly believe that as we pray on these requests that every situation that has defied God it must answer to the name of the Lord let her go now I curse you by the God of heaven out now Who else? Praise the Lord. Please, let's rise. Thank you for your patience. It's a miracle service. If you're yet to submit your request, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Hallelujah. We have gotten all kinds of humbling testimonies from this revelation. This is, this is a revelation that God gave as a communication of his love and the depth of his desire to see people touched. Not everybody can be prophesied to, not everybody may be personally ministered to. But this is a representation of your pain is a representation of your expectation and please I want you to believe release your faith you may not have come out requiring healing and with all the ministrations you may not have been directly ministered to I want you to believe because this is representing you before God I want you to stretch your hands here and pray passionately Pray passionately. You're not done. That Lord, this that I'm bringing before you, this will be the last. I truly believe. Make sure we collect for those outside. If you are still being ministered to, no problem. You can just focus while. You are receiving hallelujah
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm seeing fire burn on this thing. I wanted to go down on my knees, but I just saw fire burning. And the Lord said, I should declare and speak over it. I'll declare and speak over it. Um, there is one gentleman and one lady. One gentleman, one lady. The power of God is coming on two of them. The moment that happens, then I have the release to speak on this. These are signs and wonders, my precious people. Sometimes God does these things and we have no idea why he does them. A gentleman and a lady. This is the sign that God gave me. Now I'm ready to pray. In the name of Jesus, believe with me. I stand upon this request now and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit every request laid before God here I decree and declare it lives your life forever please believe please believe we are believers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hear me the Bible says these Egyptians you see today he said you will see them no more forever therefore I declare that everything that defied the name of the Lord represented here I declare it is buried now and forever every impossible situation written here situations that men do not have the ability to produce or provide i call on the god of heaven the creator of the ends of the earth in the name of jesus let there be supernatural miracles supernatural miracles let there be supernatural miracles that time we had not started this a woman who had been barren for eight years wrote a request then we had not started this i'm not sure I, I think koinonia just started and when it was brought to me one of our precious ladies she used to be in the media and i held and i just heard that it was done in the spirit and i said that was it and the woman had three plates one two three now that's not the miracle the miracle is that none of the child had any kind of issue whatsoever three of them are alive today i have seen them they are strong they are fine the bible says that everybody who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace when you attempt something higher than your level of anointing except god instructs you it is pride we understand our spiritual jurisdictions there are things that you have there are things you may not have now in experience i want to pray for you there is most of the requests here it is favor that will produce it listen listen many requests that we are writing whether it's a whole notebook you could as well get a clean sheet of paper and just write one word favor and that would be it it would still be worth it there are just different versions of expressing your need for favor I want to pray that grace there is a real grace for favor in the name of Jesus Christ favor listen favor is not having money favor is access to the hearts of men it's more than money you can have money and not be favored the proof of favor is not just money the proof of favor is the loyalty of men in the name that is above all names i decree and declare let the grace for favor rest upon you now let it bring about the accomplishment of this request in the mighty name of Jesus there are requests written here 
it is mercy that will answer it. The Bible says, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. I declare mercy upon this request. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I stand representing the desires, the pain of your people. You have done it again and again and we will never take you for granted. Lord, let it please you that everyone who has submitted a request may they have the opportunity to stand upon this altar to testify in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit that brought the need for this request I banish them from your life in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ May it please the Lord that testimonies will come out of this. Yes. Now please lift your hands. We're closing. Let me speak over your life. It is always my honor to do this because I have seen the creative power of the word of God. I've seen its ability to turn, to change, to transform lives. There was a very humbling testimony. Something, a gentleman, this is something that happened like last week. I thought he would come and share, maybe he would come down to Zaria and testify himself. That's why I didn't say it. He walks in somewhere like a factory or something and he's given the key to the warehouse. Now, I don't know what kind of carelessness happened, whether his friends or whatever. This gentleman just misplaced the key and these are very serious security keys it's not like something you just carry a stone and hit and buy another one and it became a serious issue for him and they threatened to call the police they threatened to do a lot of things and i was about to sleep when i got his text he had been calling and i said please send the text and he sent it and i looked at it and he said i'm about to lose my job my wife my children this and that and suddenly the anointing of the spirit came upon me on my bed i laid hands and i sent him a text i said find that key that's all i wrote god is my witness i will not stand here at this level and corner stories this gentleman said he just was listening to a koinonia message and he slept i'm telling you the truth under god and he saw me in a dream this is what he said i was not there he saw me giving him the key in a dream he woke up in the morning listen listen that's not a miracle he woke up in the morning opened his drawer and the key was there <laughs> truly speaking you see let me tell you this if you are struggling to believe this you are not a christian because the very foundation of christianity was a strange miracle that a spirit leaves his body and returns back at will please let's not limit god i say these things to challenge us these versions of unbelief we continue to endorse is not going to make our lives fruitful you have nothing to lose to stretch your faith all the way don't they limited god in the wilderness by saying can god make a way hallelujah What is strange about an angel of the Lord coming to drop a key somewhere? Didn't you hear the testimony of the gentleman who a stranger called him and gave him a number? He shared here, you remember? Gave him a number, he calls a general in the army and they say, who gave you my number? And he doesn't know who gave him his number. Bottom line, he gets a job as a result. Look, let me tell you, there is nothing God cannot do. I'm praying for you. The dimension of testimonies that will it will shock you the testifier first receive it now receive that strange order of testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ A gentleman here one of the years checked his name on admission list 
and clearly saw that he didn't get anything he frowned his way to his father who said you are a foolish son i'm not surprised and he came i don't know if it was miracle service or one of the prayers returns back to the board and checks and there's his name admission list see let me tell you this let me tell you this you you are liberty to not believe but don't say it's a lie just say i don't believe based on my work with god and based on what i have not seen but don't say it's a lie he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this jesus said it are we together strangers that must arise and step in over your issue in the name of jesus i connect you to them i connect you to them i connect you to them by the power of the holy spirit there are times you have the gift but you do not have access to the ears of the kings you will need those who are already in the palace otherwise joseph you will remain in the prison i pray for you whoever has access to the ears of your helper may god compel them to speak about you in the name of jesus christ i pray for everyone trusting god for a job in the name that is above all names please believe and by the power that is in the name of jesus i declare that between now and august by the grace and the name of the lord return with a miracle job <laughs> hallelujah i pray for those in ministry the fire that must come on a man john wesley says set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn i decree and declare may that fire come upon your life every dying business in this place hear the word of the lord i speak to you come back to life now and to live to deliver those appointed to death there are people appointed to death i heard a man of god give a story of a gentleman who missed a flight he missed a flight and the plane crashed and everybody was happy he missed the flight they didn't know he followed a train that crashed are we together you miss a flight and you are saying lord i give you praise you enter a train and you die these are people appointed to death in the name of jesus death is a spirit it has a voice it can hear i forbid the earth from receiving your body in the mighty name of jesus christ every family under financial captivity every family here and every individual sincerely trusting god to come through for you financially i pray for you may the month of june be your month please believe me may the month of june be your month let the hand of god let the grace of god rest upon you god causing all grace to abound towards you may you have sufficiency in the name of jesus christ every project you have in front of you whether it is a building project whether it's a spiritual growth project whether it's a ministry expansion project whether it's a business project it says the hand of zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it i pray in the name of jesus whatever project you have the grace to execute it let it be given to you now I don't know what has destroyed your appetite for the word of god you will open your bible and look at it like this like a storybook you can read a book of 600 pages in one week but you can hardly finish one page 
of the Bible is an attack. I decree and declare. Let the spirit of revelation and a passion for the word of God, may it rest upon you. May it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Two more prayer points and we're done. Hearing is our father glorified that ye bear much fruit. The grace for results is called the power of performance. Receive that grace now. I speak to you, produce results. Produce results. Repeated results. Predictable results. In every area of your life. Be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, let me pray for you. Everything that is alive grows. When you give birth to a child and he cannot walk after three years, no teeth, he can't talk, you know that something is wrong with that child. Are we true? Your destiny is like a child. If it is alive, then it should grow. When a tree grows and begins to mature, it begins to branch are we together now and then it starts to invite the birds it also invites men to come and partake of the fruit i don't know what has taunted your growth in life and in destiny but as we cap up this month's miracle service especially your spiritual life some of you you've not backslidden but sincerely you've been at the same level it's not like you've gone down as it were but you've just rotated around the same experience. I declare rise to a new level. Rise to a new level. Rise to a new level. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me encourage you, listen. Make sure to pay attention to the testimonies that God gives you. And be sure to make it a duty to testify. Let it not be a burden. To, you are not, testimonies don't just endorse that a man of God is anointed. Testimonies are proof to men, to creation, to all and sundry that God is love and that he is still mighty. Testimonies are a tool that consolidates the convictions of men and creates the same in others. It's important to not withhold testimony. Someone's faith is depending on the miracle that comes from releasing your faith. So be sure that as God touches you, you may not have the luxury of coming down to Zaria for those of you who are far, but we're on various social media platforms. You can always make your testimonies known and then you can contact our helplines and then someone will be there to document your testimony and it will edify the people of God. Praise the Lord. Still standing, everyone, our time is gone. I want to make an altar call. I believe in salvation. Listen, it matters that in a crowd of people like this and many more connected around the world, it matters that we give people an opportunity to encounter Jesus. Let's settle down. Please let me have your attention. Let me your attention for a minute or two. You are here in the main auditorium overflow one overflow two and all the auxiliary overflows overflow three and online and you know that you are yet to truly surrender your all to jesus and receive of his life or there are others who are saying apostle i have given my life to jesus but i need to rededicate my life to start a work with him that is truthful and serious wherever you are and whatever category you belong to our time is gone just one minute for this aside from overflow three because of time i will request overflow one overflow two wherever you are making this altar call and those in quickly leave your seat very boldly and i like for you to come and stand right here let it be my honor and my joy to lead you to jesus i don't expect you to still be thinking about it the Holy Spirit should already be convicting you. Do not wait for anyone to come. Be the first. Let me for time's sake count one to five. One. Quickly, please, if you're coming, hurry up. 
win that war. Do not say we came in group and I do not want anybody to know that I'm handing over my life to Jesus. Receiving the life of God is not a funeral service. It's something that is worth celebrating. Koinonia, are you appreciating them? Keep coming. Come to Jesus. Young and old, come to him. The Bible says, all who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I don't believe this is all overflow one, overflow two. Join them very quickly. And the Lord added daily to the church as many as should be saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Make sure that Overflow 3 has uh, the people out. God bless you. I salute your courage. Please lift your right hand as I lead you to make this prayer. You are not just reciting a poem. This is a real um, conversation between you and the Lord. You are receiving his life and you are handing over yours. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it from the depth of your heart, Lord Jesus. Some of you come for altar call when we are saying in Jesus' name. You are not born again. You should come. The, the, the prayer, you don't stroll around and then round up. You don't round up the prayer of salvation. You participate with your heart. Man believes. Are we together? Okay. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you resurrected for me. Tonight, I receive your life. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. I have the life of God. And I declare that from tonight, I am a child of God. I move forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones. Precious as they are, we receive them into the fold, the family of faith. And I declare their sins forgiven. And I declare by the authority of scripture that beginning from today, the grace to walk victoriously is released upon them. Holy Spirit, I commend them to you that you continue your ministry in their lives. Make mighty men and women out of them. I bless you with the grace that grants you capacity to stay consistent. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I salute all of you for making this decision. And then for those who also made online, thank you for making this decision. Very quickly, I'd like you to follow. the someone waving her hands, a lady. And all of you in concert, please follow her. And um, there will be a group of people to receive you very briefly and you'll be back. Let's honor them. Koinonia. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.